Hello everyone. I suppose we are on time and let's get started. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening if you are from my part of the world. Welcome to our first web center PM office hour session. Uh, we would be talking about modernizing content platform with web center content on OCI. So we are in a cloud era now and so modernization has uh, uh, every era had a different meaning and with uh, this era it would be about cloud and web center content on OCI has started that journey. And with today's update and the upcoming updates that will happen in future uh, series, you will realize how this journey has become easy or journey will become easy and interesting for customers. So hello everyone, this is Mandar and I have with me Sachin and Vinay uh, from product management team. Let's get started. So to, in today's uh, webinar today, the invite has been uh, to customers, partners, as well as Oracle employees. And so the attendees are a mix uh, of everyone. So this is safe harbor statement. While we won't be talking uh, about roadmap a lot, but uh, this is more to do with pricing that we would be talking about so that you get some idea understanding about how Web Center is priced on uh, OCI marketplace. So as this is the first session of our series, I thought I will talk about what is our focus. So Web Center PM office hours, we are going to focus basically on what has got released. So from this month, we would have uh, releases happening every month. And so we would want to keep everyone updated and uh, made aware about what is happening on Web Center on OCI Marketplace. So that's the prime objective. Uh, with those updates, we are catering to use cases which are customer specific, which could be useful for customers. So we'll talk about that. And generally those demos uh, would be around those use cases. And so we'll have some demos as well. So primary objective is to keep you updated on Web Center. And so today's agenda is also in line uh, to that. So we'll talk about uh, the this month's update we'll do based on those features uh, a small demo uh, and uh, then we will have a slight twist here where we'll talk about oracle content management uh, customers how they can find web center to be their next step and uh, so generally the time distribution would be 15 minutes for each of the topics and so that we get at least 10 minutes at the last to have a q a uh, we do have Sachin and Vinay on the panel, so please feel free to ask Q&A, uh, I mean questions in the Q&A panels so that they can respond. Okay, so uh, before getting into the update, let me first get some of uh, the folks who may not have so much of Web Center background uh, to up to pace, like uh, just a couple of slides. Uh, so that you at least have some background on web centers. That's the idea. We may not be able to get into each of the product areas and what uh, the capabilities are. But at a high level, when we talk about web center or when we say web center suite, we are referring to three pillar products. So we have web center content, web center portal, and web center sites. Web Center sites, as the name suggests, is for marketing sites, brand sites, corporate sites, those kind of use cases. We have Web Center portal for addressing customer portal, supplier portal, employee portal, self-service portal kind of use cases. And then we have Web Center content for enterprise content management, document management kind of requirements. So. Uh, each of these are uh, a full-fledged matured products been there in market for a long time and have various releases uh, till now. And we would have future releases and I'll just talk about that. So this is again to make everyone uh, aware, especially the one who have not so much of Web Center background. This is like 
the latest release is about 12 to 1 4 uh, and we publish our live uh, support timelines and it's been already published and with every release major release like the one which we will now have which is 1412 uh, you would have at least five more years of premium support and three years of extended support and this is already part of our statement of direction and uh, there are other links as well, uh, which could be referred for uh, more roadmap information. So uh, starting December, since the announcement of Oracle Content Management end of life has happened, Web Center uh, is now evolving on both the sides, the, the on-premise side of Web Center as well as on the cloud side. So this uh, we uh, re the, so this session is basically primarily focused on web center on cloud, but uh, uh, the uh, existing customer base that we have we cater to both customers interested on cloud as well as on on premise. So when we talk about web center on cloud, what does it mean? So we have released web center on marketplace on OCI marketplace. And if you go to Web Center or OCI Marketplace and search for Web Center, you will see all of these uh, uh, items there. And uh, so uh, these are available as BYOL option as well as universal credit option. So customers, existing customers can go and select BYOL option uh, and provision their environments. Uh, while if their customer doesn't have a license, they can, they can go for universal credit option. They don't need anything and, and provision the UC option or paid option, which is available. On the right hand side, these are the SKUs. And if you see these SKUs, uh, people who have experience with Web Center would find it very closely aligned to what we had on premise. So now on cloud, we have Web Center content for OCI, Web Center UCM for OCI, Web Center imaging for OCI. So uh, yeah, technically or uh, basically license wise in terms of restrictions or uh, what is available is it, it, it in is in line with what we had in on premise. So let's go into each of these queue and understand what are they for. So these are the SKUs and uh, these are the pricing uh, that is available. So they are available on OCPU per hour and uh, each of these SKUs basically uh, can help you address many of the use cases. So Web Center content is the bigger set and it can cater to a lot of use cases. So enterprise content hub as a use case, document management, uh, records management, digital asset management, a smaller subset is Web, Web Center Universal Content Management or UCM for OCI. And uh, so you can do document management, digital asset management with it. With imaging, Web Center imaging, you could uh, do transactional content management like APAR process or manage attachment to a business suite, PeopleSoft, those, those kind of requirement where you need to uh, attach a document. Uh, to a e-business suite uh, record, it can be an invoice or it could be, say, an uh, employee document. And then we have a Web Center Enterprise Capture two SKUs here, uh, and and they are for digitization and uh, sourcing of content or documents from emails or scanners. We have forms recognition for extracting. So once you have the digitized invoice, you can extract it using the capability that Web Center Forms Recognition provides. And uh, then this could be populated as metadata into the document along with the document in Web Center content. We, we have Web Center portal. Uh, we talked about it, employee portal, customer portal kind of requirements. We have sites for brand sites, microsites. And then we have satellite server, Web Center site satellite server for uh, caching. Uh, but if customer has CDN, which is normal, uh, the process or normally the preferred option, and we also would recommend to go for CDN uh, as they would be widely available. So these are the SKUs. Now, the next thing that comes into mind is now once you have these uh, options or you decide on, uh, say, provisioning Web Center content on OCI, 
how do you go about so there are some prerequisites that you need to be ready with and so that you can then uh, go through the provisioning exercise and and this is the documentation which clearly talks about so for you to say provision web center content on oci you have to get identity service identity domain created you have a database there you have vcn to be created compartments so all of these aspects needs to be ready once you have these in place you can then get started with the provisioning exercise this is something which we have been which we have covered in previous sessions so not really getting into detail we have already a webinar which talked about it uh, so you can now get into so providing those details you have vcn detail you can provide the object storage information keys uh, database uh, information uh, then uh, coming to web center content you can decide how many compute you want how many uh, nodes for your clustering uh, that you would require and uh, file system related information uh, and then the identity domain and uh, then finally you can uh, once you are done with providing all those details you can provision your environment and your environment gets done in a very short time so uh, based on those prerequisites and as well as the wizard that i just went through you'll realize that it is not just about web center skew that you require uh, for running web center on oci marketplace but there are many other services which will be used along with it so this is basically a bill of material to get you an understanding that when you are talking to a customer or a uh, customer needs to understand what is the list of uh, services so this gives you an understanding and generally most of those web center skews would require uh, these skews there are some here and there changes but at a broad level these could be the line items which are commonly required for your web center provisioning so idea was not really to highlight the pricing the idea here was more to uh, list out uh, the uh, uh, bill of material and the items that would be required to provision so what i have seen is uh, when customer sees that you have uh, so many uh, things to do as part of the prerequisites and then it gets provisioned the question then uh generally customer ask is whether i really require to go the marketplace or can i just set it up uh the way i set it up in on uh, on my on premise so there are some advantages that i wanted to highlight and these are some of them and these advantages are only going to grow so the first thing is uh the provisioning experience that we have if you if you remember there is a clustering option there and so you can add and remove node uh uh so and as as per the requirement uh, so if you have more load coming up you can easily go back and add nodes to it so it becomes really easy for you to control your billing uh, not really billing maybe if in a bol envir uh, environment but it becomes easy for you to do the as uh, configuration then uh, there is one script that will uh, do your patching right from jdk to weblogic to web center so that simplifies and on cloud you would really require to get the advantage of the new features getting added so as we go about every month adding new features this will help you to be current and also take advantage of these new features if you do it separately you would lose out then uh, if you realize what you have to really do is have these uh, prerequisites set up so that you have a database there you have the identity domain there uh, and then the provisioning actually ties it up all together whereas if you have to do it on your own you have to do the exercise of all tying up and doing a lot of work to get it all done and there are more things coming up and uh, as we as we progress and so i'm not getting into the road map but there is a surely a lot of focus on simplification in terms of provisioning giving a lot of management advantages management monitoring as well as patching so with that we come to the key uh, information uh, for this uh, session which is about the update so we have released web center content on oci 
यूनिवर्सल क्रेडिट ऑप्शन इन अप्रैल एंड नाउ द फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ मे वी हैव रिलीज अ लिस्ट ऑफ केपेबिलिटीज विच आई एम गोइंग टू टेक थ्रू एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ मंथली अफेयर so this is surely there in documentation so if you go to documentation what i'm whatever i am talking about is is being listed already so the first thing is we now have web center content rest apis we did have apis before with web center content we had web services we had java uh, we have ridc uh, we also had uh, some form of json kind of api which was which was not as per standard so we now have a standard base rest api available and we are kind of releasing them in a uh, bunch so we have first set of uh, rest apis which have come with this release and with every release you will see more and more rest apis getting released the next one is smart tagging so uh, customers or whoever requires digital asset management kind of use case who wants to who have a lot of images to manage they really appreciate this uh, kind of capability where the images get auto tagged and so it helps in searching so that's now added into the product we have uh, the embeddable capability so with rest apis the advantage that you get is you can now integrate you can call these apis externally from uh, say a application but once you say upload the document you want to view the document and with this embeddable viewer capability you can use this viewer and plug it into a, any other application and so that's now made possible with this release we have content reports also released this month so you will now be able to get a view of what's uh, going in your content repository especially in cloud you really want to know how much of the usage is happening who are using it uh, so all of those information is us surely something that you could get from these reports and then there is a complete session that uh, which is going to happen uh, next month which is about fa integration with web center content so that you can have an external content repository and leverage it uh, with your fa uh, process and and there are quite a good examples uh, that we would be talking about in our next session so then these are some which were capabilities that we had but we now got it part of our provisioning process so object storage was already supported but we are now made it part of the uh, provisioning exercise so you can decide whether you want to go with object storage or not and similarly the sso of uh, web center content with uh, iam and then finally we now have from this release this simplified one script uh, which will help you to patch your jdk web logic and web center every month and uh, get access to the new new features so these are some of the things that we have added and i am going to show you first four of these capabilities with a demo so let me let me start so this demo like i said i am going to get you uh, like i'll show three things with this demo i am going to show you rest apis i am going to show you this embeddable viewer capability that we have and then the, the third thing is smart tagging so let me start so for showing rest apis the best way uh to uh, show it is through postman and this is basically the postman script now people who are non technical this is just a 5 minutes demo just bear with me and you will find it interesting as well so uh, yeah this is the payload that i just showed and i am now selecting uh image there there is a title called food platter that is associated this is the api and these are some of the other apis that have got uh, released so we'll do a quick search we'll do all of these one by one and uh, also see how how the uh, repository responds to it so i have called upload rest api it has uploaded the document and in the header you get so i'm doing a refresh so this food platter has got uploaded this is the viewer this is the embed viewer that i was talking about 
and this embed viewer now shows me the content uh, and yeah these are some of the other information so there is a web viewable file and the metadata that has got uploaded so the, if you see this is the document id which the header was also showing and these are the tags auto tags that have got populated uh, once you upload the image into the repository yeah so let's go back to postman and let's do this next thing so let's do a quick search so this is the search api uh, to quick, quickly find and if you see i have done order by date and descending so the last thing that i have done comes up first so so these are yeah so now it has given me the search result and because i i did the uploads so that is the first thing that it was showing but the result is quite huge so i can then filter it out and uh, uh, so if you see one of the thing here so i can decide what fields i want to uh, get and show through this fields uh, parameter and uh, this is the query uh, filter criteria i can and it or it and add more uh, query conditions and this is how many uh, records that i want to see and so i i can do a search here and this time because there is only one food platter content or document uh, image i see only one uh, based on my filter criteria let's upload a revision and this time let's pick a different uh, content or image on and here we will upload a revision so this is an existing image already uploaded this is the metadata and if you see the document name or content id it's it ends at 669 and let's upload and create a revision there so it's already the yeah it's the same document name there and i'm now going to select a different image and i'm going to upload it as a, a new revision and with other metadata going along with it with a new name there and it has got uploaded successfully and i can go back and check whether that has come so i'll do a refresh and yeah it has it has got uploaded so if i now go back to the viewer and the viewer should show me two revisions so it is already showing me revision two so this is the new image that was uploaded it also shows me the same content id and the tags that that it created uh, for this image and it's revision two so there are two revisions now revision one and revision two and so now i can play around with the apis and do more things so so i'll go back to postman and i will call the api to uh, download this revision so i i can i i select uh the document name and i'll and i can download and yeah it needs to be handled so that it uh, it downloads it as a file uh, i can get the metadata as well with the query so uh, and i can tell for what revision and it brings back me all the information about that uploaded version and then finally we whatever we uploaded let's delete it and we delete the version 2 there so now yeah it has got deleted so if i now do a refresh it it goes out yeah so i'm back to that same version and if you see the revision has gone now what i was showing all this while with all these apis basically this app that you are seeing so yeah it shows the old uh, tags which were associated to this image and the revision is now showing only one revision and if you go back here this is this is actually a vbcs app the rest apis that i was showing it actually calls those apis and you can create such apps now very easily with rest api so i do a search uh, and i see everything which is related to rest 
and uh, i can delete uh, so i go back here this is the uploaded image i delete it and it goes off so basically uh, you can uh, create interesting apps or you can integrate now uh, with uh, web center content from any other application so this is basically what the rest apis could be make your job easy so with that let me go to the other demo so this demo is basically when you see these file operation apis you might wonder how many things that we can do while we are going to add a lot every month but there is a use case that i thought is is an interesting one and you could manage it with just the file operation apis that we have so this is an hr employee use case i am not employee this is a candidate onboarding use case where the candidate has not become an employee and so you need to collect uh, the documents from it push it to a verification team so they verify and once approved this can get into the content repository which then maybe fa or any other erp could access so here now if you see uh, this is exactly what is happening so the candidate uh, is given a form so he has been shortlisted so he is sent a mail and there is a link and he gets into this app now and he is filling his details uh, so and he is he is basically providing uh, the data along with documents so he is uploading different id proofs so let me go fast here so he selects a lot of identity proofs files and uh, yeah he then uh, provides his education details again the information is uh, not just about data it also has uh, his certificates there which he attaches and then one by one uh, he attaches to the form and then submits it so once it's submitted he gets the verification status and all of his files being uploaded there he he can download it and see whether it has gone on right and uh, then basically it goes to the verification team which can verify whether the information sent is all okay or not and uh, yeah the the happy state is what we are talking about here so they approve it and once approved the document then gets pushed into all the document basically gets pushed into web center content repository and so you can now search based on the candidate id and in the future next session we will talk about how uh, web center content which is externally hand content can attach these documents to an employee record so very simple use case of file operation and how it becomes useful for uh, various other and this could be used, this is an example of a use case but there could be many such use cases where it could be relevant okay so we what we basically saw was an app ui this was this this was initially vbcs then it was apex calling rest apis this is web center content on oci where open search is configured database object storage idcs uh, is all set and you can have more of the oci services that you can integrate with and be more more and more innovative uh, with it so so it basically opens up uh, where with more possibilities and that's where basically you, your modernization becomes more effective and interesting okay so now let me quickly show you the content report that we have so here we are so this is the web center content interface and uh, here we have added content reports and this is apex dashboard that we have created so you will be able to get uh, an insight of what is happening in your uh, web center content repository so there are different set uh, of reports so this is about content accessed within this period so what content was created access so you get a list here 
you can drill down and get more details. So this was the document accessed uh, and who were the two users and how many times they accessed. And then there are many more other reports as well. There is user access report. So user access by author, user access by usernames. Uh, then there are some admin reports about inactive content, inactive users. And then there are search reports, search reports showing uh, search summary. So if you go to advanced search, you will, you will see what kind of searches that were done uh, or uh, quick search. You know, what are those typical texts that people are putting? So you get an idea about what's happening with your repository. Very important and useful information, especially on cloud. So going back, so that was about uh, content reports. So now uh, talking about the, the last part, which is about how Oracle content customers can find Web Center content uh, interesting and why they should think about Web Center as the next step. So uh, if you see, when we talk about Oracle content management, we are talking about four primary use cases. It's about document management collaboration. It's about digital asset management. It is about transactional document management attached to say some business application transaction or website. And if you see uh, three of these map to Web Center content and websites basically maps to Web Center sites. We are not going today on uh, so much into Web Center sites, but we'll talk majorly around Web Center content. In fact, the capabilities that we talked about was also around Web Center content and very much relevant for OCM customers. So what are we basically saying? Why are why web, OCM customers can look at Web Center content solution? Because of all of these reasons. So it's a mature platform. It's been there. We have host and lot of customers using it. And so a lot of use cases are already uh, addressed and can be addressed with Web Center content. With 14 release that we talked about coming up, you have a, a big supported timeline that you get. Then uh, we'll get into the details. Web Center content does map uh, to host of OCM capabilities and the following slides, I'll get into details of it. There is a marketplace advantage that you get. Uh, so you are in control in terms of so many aspects when it comes to marketplace. For so example, you have a dev environment. Uh, you can shut it down and uh, you can get it back. You are, whatever uh, was the previous state can be restored and you can start from there, but you can save cost. You can save cost on uh, uh, nodes based on load. So there is huge amount of marketplace advantage that you get. We provide migration tool. So you can basically migrate your content with the help of partner or CSS or consulting and move your OCM content into Web Center content very easily using the migration tool. Enterprise organizations have this requirement of having access to logging and auditing and uh, with Web Center content because they have complete access they they can integrate their same tools or requ require whatever is required in terms of compliance they they are able to address it very easily we already saw rest apis pluggable embeddable interface viewer that we have all of these helps in integration and and a lot of flexibility that that uh, that you now get which was very similar to ocm web center content provides uh, uh, quite advanced security capability. It has uh, three levels of security or three uh, ways of providing security. You have security groups, you have accounts, you have ACLs, and generally complexity related to security can be easily addressed with what is already provided with Web Center content. You can then further leverage uh, the other services that Web Center content on OCI can take advantage of. So example, object storage, and so you have these customer managed keys, or you can uh, have IDCS and, and you can take, ad uh, take advantage of, I mean, IAM uh, capabilities as well. Simplified patching is already something that I talked about that with one script, you are able to kind of uh, upgrade or patch your JDK, WebLogic, as well as WebCenter. 
with web center content you also get a uh, very matured records management capability again something as an organization enterprise organization people appreciate there are compliance requirement and you can easily cater uh, to it with records management it's scalable so uh, you can have scalability on demand and you can have a dr environment set up which can be cost effective you can decide you want to have 50% dr or uh, uh, active passive dr and all of that is well uh, possible and then finally provisioning is very similar to what was there with ocm you can provision uh, uh, users with idcs because web center uh, works with idcs so these are at uh, high level uh, some of these key points that uh, that uh, ocm customers have found it important and useful and many of the customers are deciding on web center this is basically that i talked about in terms of mapping so how web center content and ocm kind of maps uh, in terms of capabilities so these are some of the list of things you would want to do and how ocm uh, addresses it and how web center content address it is for dms kind of use cases so you have desktop integration uh, you we have you can have custom metadata that you can uh, populate uh, viewer is there we just saw it annotation redaction capability is available workflow is available role based access is there search microsoft office 365 is one uh, thing which is currently desktop only and not uh, web uh, uh, capability available but we do have partners so in case the customer really wants it uh, there is a way to get it available through partners in case of ocm uh, there are a couple of things which uh, it can be missing so example redaction is a very powerful uh, capability where you can have a part of the document uh, abstracted uh, and uh, that is possible with web center content this is about web center sites and how it maps with ocm sites and if you see majority of the capabilities do map uh, uh, with ocm so or or whatever ocm could do it can be done with web center sites as well uh, for cache caching uh, the, the ocm did had an inbuilt cdn whereas in case of web center sites you would require a external cdn and just like ocm you could also plan a headless uh, site with web center sites so you can you can actually deliver a complete headless site so that uh, there is you don't require to go through the uh, site builder approach of building sites so yeah the flexibility is is available just the way it was with ocm and uh, so this is again uh, what we have seen generally with docs kind of customers who have used doc document side of ocm and have say created uh, a vbcs ui or they have uh, called document services and integrated with some other apps so this is basically to show that uh, you could easily map it uh, with web center content now so you could have similar uh document management provided by web center content you can have folders and uh, you could you could basically have vbcs calling web center content uh, rest services so completely kind of maps it and you could have the use case that was uh, running with ocm uh, you could have that kind of integration possible with web center content also so uh this is basically uh, that i really wanted to cover are there any questions yeah man there are a couple of questions so let me kind of summarize for you so one of the question i think i try to answer but it was like i think multiple question around migration plan right migration from on premise web center content to cloud migration about uh, ocm to web center sites all different uh, i think one question is like can i migrate from ocm uh, asset to web center sites so this are maybe you would like to answer them together yeah sure sure so yeah so regarding migration from ocm to web center sites so ocm sites to web center sites we do have a migration tool capability available for migrating uh, the ocm assets uh, into web center sites 
and uh, yeah uh, currently uh, that is the thing that we could uh, be able to support about ocm uh, to web center content migration again we have a tooling available so whether it is the doc side of uh, uh, ocm or the asset side of ocm that you are using uh, we can migrate into uh, web center content i uh, sorry yeah web center content from ocm into web center content this is currently not released so that is the reason you have not seen it in the uh, currently released available capability but we surely have this in plan why is it recommended to use web center site headlessly i mean uh, the only reason i would say is headless way of building site has become uh, i would say the new way of building uh, sites so people have been using react and various other javascript framework and uh, and you do get uh, uh, people with these skill sets so if that is something that customer is looking for then web center site can provide that capability so we just wanted to highlight it site builder capability is available with web center sites and can be also something that uh, customer can plan to use great okay so while there are more questions coming uh, would like to talk about what could be the next step for each one of you uh, we would really request you to go ahead and provision web center content i in fact web center content or sites or portal whatever is your uh, expertise or our requirement from customer and uh, yeah let us know your experience if it is web center content we now have rest services so you can plan to uh, consume it in your app and the next session is in june last thursday uh, of june and where we would be talking about how you can leverage web center content with fusion apps so uh, and yeah for any queries you would have uh, you can reach out to me and vinay there is one more question uh, is oracle planning on adding major new features to web center family of product yes there is uh, we surely have so with 14c release which we are not talking currently but yeah there are things which are happening and then we have more things that we are planning typical mm -hmm. timeline for migrating on premise web center content to cloud uh, so typical timeline depends on the content size that the customer has the, so because the content volume will also decide the time required for it and the it is not just about content migration right if it if there are integrations that the customer has done with some application or there is a custom app that they have created using say vbcs then that app needs to be modified we have cases which we are working where say e business suite uh, is integrated with uh, ocm and and so they have uh, urls in, inside e business suite and we are trying to see how to help them to migrate so it depends on how the integrations have happened so there can't be a typical uh, we surely with the tool uh, have simplified this whole migration uh, for customers but yeah, it all depends on the customer scenario manda there was another question asked right that comparison between an ocm versus uh, web center collaboration capability uh, maybe you wanted to touch up on that yeah okay so uh, on web center content uh, uh side uh, we have a viewer which i'm sure uh, maybe you may not have seen it uh, it helps you to do annotation and as part of the annotation you can put comments over it uh, you can put uh, boxes and there are some other uh, other areas in which you can you can mark your comments there is an uh, redaction so that basically there is a way where you can have information shared between and as part of the uh, document itself between the people who are sharing the document so there is that uh, kind of collaboration available with web center content 
and what was the other question uh, vinay no i think this is uh, this great and the another question was mandar around the availability of the feature right so whatever we have demonstrated here it is part of the marketplace release so the question was all around uh, what is the plan to make it available on the on premise whether it will be available or not correct yeah so uh, the the plan that we have is to release it first in marketplace and that's where this monthly cycle is coming into picture and so every month you will hear about something getting added to our marketplace uh, uh, capability and we will talk about it and uh, the on premise uh, product life cycle remains the same which is basically the quarterly cycle and so you would get a lot of it as part of your quarterly bundle patch so existing customers using the product will get say rest apis as part of the quarterly bundle patch so mandar just for the clarity right it's safer to say that whatever the capability we are adding marketplace will be available but it will be available with uh, uh, on premise release cycle right right yeah yes, okay yes. and but there can be some gaps where uh, logically it doesn't make sense to make it part of the web uh, sorry on premise because uh, we will be leveraging the other oci cloud services so there can be a, a minor delta which may not be part right because it doesn't make sense for on premise customer to connect there right yes well i don't see any other questions from there i think uh, just okay any estimate yeah. how much time does 1 gb of content migration will take yeah so uh, so this is something that we are doing so so this is a common question which comes from customer and uh, we will have a proper i would say uh, more details so because i don't want to say something and then it becomes uh, like a thumb rule or something so we will provide this kind of information as part of uh, the customer conversation so uh, depending on whether it is a website related content whether it is web center content migration uh, this this kind of information or this kind of benchmarking exercise is currently in progress and can be provided any update on ui ux transformation from adf to vb studio for next generation so ui ux if you see the viewer uh, the lightweight viewer is 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 the jet viewer that you saw and there are more things happening but because like i said pm office rs is not about roadmap we are not really highlighting and focusing on it a lot uh, about it we we are talking about what has got released and that's the uh, idea here if you are an oracle employee please connect uh, and i'll talk about what's happening with the ui ux in fact anyone can connect and we'll talk about uh, what's our roadmap plan